So let's begin by creating a simple website and we'll take a look at the various different types of control that you have available to you in an ASP.NET web application. So I'll bring up the start menu and we'll run Visual Studio 2005. I'll just get rid of the start page here and let's create a new website. Now we're not going to actually create much content in here so let's not worry too much about the actual names that we choose. New website and I'll just call the website website4. That seems good enough. Just make sure that the location is file system and the language is C-sharp and also make sure that you're creating a website not a web service. Okay everything's fine here so let's just click OK and there's our simple ASP.NET web application and I'm gonna bring the toolbox into view. We're gonna have a look at the various controls in the toolbox. So let's make it nice and big and I'm gonna just collapse the various different sections here. As you can see there are a number of different tabs on the toolbox. Let's start off with the HTML tab. There we go. So each of the controls in the HTML tab corresponds directly with a normal HTML tag as you'd have in a conventional HTML page. So for example, if I drag an input text control onto my web page, and it doesn't matter at this stage whether you drag it onto the source code or onto the design view, choose whichever you prefer. So here we're going to drag it onto the source view. And as you can see, all we have at this stage is a simple input control. This is basic HTML. It's assigned a programmatic ID to the control, and it specified what type of input control we have. This is a, a text control. Okay, let's see what else we've got where we have a simple button, a reset button, which enables us to reset the contents of the web page to their default values. We have a submit button, which posts the data to the web server. We have a simple text box, as we've just seen. We have an input file box. This enables you to upload files to the web server. We have a password box. This is basically an input text box where the text that you enter is represented by asterisks, so it's suitable for passwords. And then we have single checkboxes, and we have radio buttons, and we have hidden fields. Now, we saw an example of hidden fields yesterday, briefly. Hidden fields are a conventional way of passing data back from the web server to the web browser to convey information back to the browser without actually making it visible. We're going to see quite a lot of hidden fields in the next lesson when we examine the page processing model and see exactly how ASP.NET controls retain their state between postbacks. What else have we got? Well, we've got a text area. That's for multi-line text boxes. We've got the good old HTML table, and we'll see an example of that later. Image control, if you want to drag and drop GIFs or JPEGs, for example. We have a select control, which contains a list of items. Horizontal rules, and at the last we have a div. A div represents a panel or an area on the screen. We'll see an example of that later as well. So there we are. Those are the set of controls available on the HTML tab. As you can see, this is by no means a comprehensive list of all the different types of control you can have in an HTML page. Sometimes you need to go back into the source view and manually type the control that you want on your page. So, for example, if you wanted to add a hyperlink to the page, there's no hyperlink control here, so you'd have to go to your page and manually edit the source code. So, for example, I could add a hyperlink, specify an href, just made that one up, and then the text that appears on the hyperlink. Okay, so there we are. While we're at it, just before we move on to have a look at some standard tags, let's just take a look at some of the properties on the basic input control. If I move my cursor into the input control, and just move back a space, and then press the space bar, so Visual Studio at this point pops up IntelliSense, and it gives me a list of all the various attributes that I can set on my input control. So some of these you no doubt recognize. For example, I can set the maximum length on the control, I can specify the ID, I can say whether the control is enabled or disabled, and I can also specify the maximum length. But that's about it. There aren't many other properties I can set. It's quite a limited set of functionality here. There are various client-side events that I can handle, but these are client-side functions that would be implemented typically in JavaScript and run on the web browser, not at the web server. Just want to point out this entry here, on server change. This is a server-side event, and we're going to talk about how server-side events work with HTML controls a little bit later.